Hey guys, how y'all doing? It's me, Johnny, and welcome back to another one of our Sora videos. And uh, the end of a game week has come across. And lads, it's a sad one. It didn't go as well as I hoped it would. I was going into it very hopeful, especially for the under 23 Rare Pro. It all started off with 100 points off of Kirkju. I mean, Kirkju right now is just on fire, man. The guy has put up incredible performances. And he's slowly reaching those areas that someone like um, Mike Trezor from Genk is getting to. Genk's uh, Trezor is like getting high dark greens all the time lately. And uh, with the odd lower score. But uh, Kirkju has done incredible. He's gotten 100 points with no decisive. So I absolutely love seeing that. Especially considering it was only a 1-1 draw. He is uh, taking complete control of their game. Which is something that we like to see. And I'm hearing that teams like Dortmund and such are interested in him. I think that would be a great next step. I would hate for him to go to a team like West Ham and uh, ruin his career. So I really want him to go somewhere where he can continuously improve himself and uh, get the, uh, I guess, the direction that he deserves in terms of like uh, being taught things. And I think at Dortmund, that would be the right next step. Uh, but yeah, Kirkju was possibly the only standout player this game week for me. Uh, it's really sad to see that we didn't manage to win any rewards this week. Yep, no rewards at all. Uh, Moleka did play, Moleka did score, but Besiktas lost, which I could not be happier about. Like, if we go onto, onto um, the uh, Twitter page of uh, Besiktas right here, they tweet that they have lost 2-1, around 6,000 messages. And I can tell you right now, most of them are genuinely just screaming at the team, let the, let the manager go and bring back Shenol Gunesh, who is a Besiktas former coach who had a really good record. Uh, they either want him or Sergen Yalchin. That is what they're talking about at the moment in terms of Besiktas fans. And uh, yeah, man, I'm kind of glad that they lost in the end because I'm sick and tired of the way that their coach plays. He has a bunch of incredibly technically gifted players in his squad, but... The setup that he's going for is just woeful. Um, I, I've watched uh, plenty of their games lately, and here's the plan for Besiktas when they play. Let's play the ball down to the wings, to the right back or left back, which is either Masuaku or Rozier. Then have them cross the ball in towards Vekost, who obviously is a tall lad, and just hope and pray that something happens. And that's basically been their game plan for the entirety of these previous uh, games that they have played. And the funny thing is, in the first minute of the game, Muleka plays an incredible through ball on his weak foot over to Vekors, who then scores, right? And that all happened with great ground passing play. And it was good build up and everything like that. But in the second half, he takes off Muleka, going into the second half, brings on Jeng Tosun, uh, because it was 1-1 at the time. And he starts playing in a 4-4-2 formation. Before that, he was kind of playing in like a 4-2-3-1. And I don't understand what the thought process behind that is because Muleka is a striker, but he's been played down the right wing this entire time. You can clearly tell that he has a great connection with Vekost and he just does not play him at striker. So whenever he switches to the 4-4-2, which would be perfect for Muleka, he still <laughs> takes him off the pitch and put, puts Tosun on and they lost. So I can't wait for the for the manager to be fired. Valeria Ismail, a former Werder Bremen player, terrible coach, awful tactical setups. I cannot wait for that man to be fired because once he does and this team gets a proper coach that knows how to utilize the players within the team to the best of their abilities, they should be unstoppable. So I'm glad it is happening at this stage of the season. I really hope the coach gets fired just like any other Besiktas fan out there from what I've seen so far. Especially one of my uh, better friends out there. He's a Besiktas a friend and uh, he, a fan I should say, and he hates the coach. He wants, he basically yesterday was hoping that they would lose. Once it was 1-1, he was so pissed that he said, you know what, I hope we lose. And luckily they did. So hopefully soon enough on the Besiktas page, we will see them going out and tweeting, yes, we have fired our coach. That is what we're hoping for uh, seeing. But yeah, that's the situation with Besiktas. Not uh, enough, uh, n nothing else we need to talk about there. But we need to talk about one thing. And that is the fact that uh, our boy right here, let me show you. We have some of our players who have done well that we didn't use. And 
One of them is Balik Visha. So Balik Visha, the guy that we picked up earlier on for around 665, has already sold for 724 because people have realized he's back from injury. He got 69 points. I didn't use him because he was up against Genk, which made sense. They lost 3-1, right? Things didn't really go too well for them. But he still got 68.6 points uh, from uh, just AA alone. So I'm soon, hopefully, expecting him to get into these ranges, which will help us out massively. And Antwerp did have a great, uh, great start into the season, but somehow things haven't really gone their way lately. And uh, yeah, you know, you want to see them get, get back in this type of form where they won five games back to back. So hopefully that will happen anytime soon. And when that does, Balik Visha is going to play a massive part in it. So I'm glad that he's back in scoring, but we did not use him. When it comes to strikers this week, Moleka, I think, was the only one that scored for me. Yes, he was the only one. Odgaard, Zion Fleming and Sheshko all didn't do anything and that is what it is. So uh, we had put those guys in there. And in the training teams, you guys can see that uh, certain players didn't even play. I mean, Tobin Rhein, he has not played at all. And uh, that's a huge letdown, but it is what it is. Now for the upcoming game week, my friends, we are going into it with uh, two teams. And that's huge because it's midweek and we have two teams. Now I have a question to you in the comments right now. So this is the team that I've generally gone for, right? So if you guys can see... We have the matchup between Burnley and Norwich. Norwich hasn't been great lately. And I feel like this could be the nail in a coffin for their uh, coach to get fired. If Burnley win this game, I think Norwich's coach is gone. And I think it's Dean Smith, isn't it? Uh, but yeah, Burnley is playing at home. I'm expecting them to do somewhat well. I do think they will concede. I don't necessarily see a clean sheet here. Um, but yeah, we'll see what happens. I think uh, Muric will have plenty to do. So a good AA game could come off here, which is what I'm kind of hoping for. While uh, Taylor Harvard Bellis manages to get like a 60 to 70 score, which would be great. A clean sheet would obviously be massive. Um, but yeah, Shimanski and Orkun Kirkchu are playing against Sturm Graz. Last time they played against uh, Graz, let me show you guys <clears throat> how things have gone. So uh, it was a 6-0 victory. <laughs> and in that 6-0 victory... Obviously, uh, the entire team basically did well. Shimanski at the time wasn't fit to play by the looks of things. Uh, Kukcher had a 66-point game, could have definitely done better. But yeah, they decimated their opponents in that game. And even though this time it's away from home, I'm still somewhat expecting a big match from Feyenoord here. And uh, let's go into the Soraya Sharp as well and see how things are predicted. So this one is Europa League, isn't it? I think Feyenoord is in the Europa League, yes. So... The odds are in favor of uh, Feyenoord. Those are some really good odds, by the way. Like, if you want to win some money, 1.95 seems quite high to me. Uh, but it's probably because it's away from home. 1.72 expected goals there. Shimanski 90%, Kirkju 90%. That's what we love to see. And uh, yeah, I, I am somewhat hopeful that these two can do really well in this matchup where Kirkcher picks up a really nice AA game once again, even if he doesn't have a decisive, and Shimanski does get that decisive that he has been looking for in the last game, but not been able to find it. So hopefully this time around it works out for him. And then Odgaard and his team, um, I mean, if we look into how they played against Vaduz last time, I think it was a big surprise, wasn't it? Was, was it? No, it wasn't. 4-1 victory. Yep, that's what it was. Odgaard got 60 points without a decisive. So again, he's very much capable of doing stuff like that. And I'm hoping that in that game, he does step up to a decisive score and gets it going for himself. This is possibly one of the better matchups when it comes to uh, the Challenger division. And uh, I think that is in the Conference League. So let's go into it and see what uh, Sore Sharp says or Play Sharper says. So here it is. Odds are heavily in favor of A's at Alkmaar, as we can see. Uh, 2.19 expected goals. Odgaard, 90%. Carlson, 90%. Uh, Danny David missed a couple of big chances in the last game. Definitely needs to step up his game. Classy, Reinders in midfield. Van Brederode, I didn't really enjoy in the last game. So I'm kind of hoping Sugabara plays. I, I liked him a lot more uh, when he came on. I think when he came on, he actually scored or got an assist as well in the last game. Uh, defensively, they haven't done too well in that last matchup. Uh, Kerkes should have a good time trying to put those crosses onto Odgaard's head. But that is how things are going. Hopefully, uh, we'll have a good team there. So basically, matchups and everything, I think this is technically the best team I can put up. Then, when we go into the All-Star, the rare All-Star, you'll see that we have some players with 
bad matchups, right? We have the likes of Anthony Morris here, who is in this team, who has a good matchup, is possibly going to get a clean sheet. I think the chances of that happening are not necessarily too low. So let's see. Malmo against them. Expected uh, clean sheet 36.9%. He is expected to start. I think this could be a good opportunity for a clean sheet. And this is something that like kind of has me in a spot where I'm thinking, oh, should I go for this? So last time, I believe Omar Soleil played against Chelsea. He didn't get a good score or he got injured after 45 minutes and got subbed off. Let me see. Is that game anywhere in here? No, yeah, he didn't play 1-1. One, one. Um, when we look at that, the defenders of uh, Salzburg in that game didn't do too well. You can tell that Bernardo was definitely not meant to play in that game, in that centre-back position. That didn't really work out into their favour. So with Soleil, I do expect a better defensive performance, especially at home. Salzburg are really good. I know Chelsea are going to be extremely dangerous and probably going to come out of that game successfully. But I think Soleil here, with the tough matchup, even though he has a tough matchup, I can still see him get like 50 plus. But those highs of like 70, 80, I don't know if, I, if I'm going to see it here. Even though having said that, he's going to have a lot to do. So that's something to keep in mind. And uh, when we look at players that I also have available, we have the likes of Saliba. But I don't think Saliba is going to play. Arsenal have rotated a lot when it comes to the uh, to the uh, Europa League here. Hold on, let me go in here. So Arsenal, when you look at it, it does say Saliba 60%, but most of the time, the way they have played was Holding and Gabriel. I don't quite know why Saliba has been put in here for 60% this time around. Like, if I would know, if I could be confident that he plays, I want to see what kind of score um, anyone got against that PSV Eindhoven defense uh, attack last time around. So they won 1-0. Holding had 66.6. .6. Gabriel had 68. I mean, ideally, this is what you want, right? Ideally, I would like to put in Saliba in here, but it's just too much of a DMP worry for me to go after it. So I'd rather go for the, you know, more guaranteed options, even though they might not be the best matchups, you know? And when we look at this here, Burnley... Harvard Bell is 90%. I really hope Jordan Bear comes back in. Uh, I would like to see him play instead of Charles Taylor. Uh, but yeah, like that 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 option, Taylor Harvard Bell is more guaranteed. And Soleil is not going to necessarily get have a great game here, I'm assuming, against them. And Saliba, as much as I think if he plays, he's going to be the best defender I can have this week. It's just not going to work out. I love the 11.5% on him, by the way. I really hope I can still make good use of it this season. Um, but yeah, Enzo, I think this, just like Morris, is another good one that we have in the team. I think Enzo and Morris could possibly be some of the better players we have. I think Juve are not necessarily looking too good, especially their midfield does not impress me at all. So for me, Benfica are favorites here, and the odds are showing that way. Enzo Fernandez fully expected to play, expected to score 59 right there, 36% clean sheet chance here. And XG of 1.57. I think Enzo is going to have a great game. Because that midfield does not scare him at all, in my opinion. Rabiot, Locatelli, McKenney, No disrespect. But I think Enzo is on another, another level. Even though this previous game, he didn't do too well in the derby against Porto there. Uh, but yeah, I think he's going to be dominating this matchup. In my opinion, that's what we're going to look forward to seeing. And I think Benfica at home is going to be a, a very, very tough uh, task for Juventus. So I'm thinking Enzo and Morris would be great players to use. Xavi Simmons not really having any hope that he's going to do too well. This is a very, very tough matchup, right? And we don't really necessarily have anyone else to put in here. And uh, I mean, actually, I do have Enzo in here. So I could take out Xavi Simmons out of this team, which is something I didn't realize if I go Saliba in here instead of instead of Xavi Simmons, huh? That could be all right, you know. That could be a team that gets something done. Because Xavi Simmons, as much as I really like him, I don't see him do too well. I think the last game that he played against Arsenal was this 42 score here, if I'm not mistaken. Was it? Yeah, 42.3. I just ah, uh, I just don't see them do too well. But then again, they are playing at home. One goal might be possible for PSV Eindhoven. And if he is involved in it, 
I'd rather have him in the starting lineup because I know he plays. And they are playing for that second spot to guarantee it, right? Let me just double check here. Arsenal, are you completely through already or no? Oh, we already have some big games today, man. I'm going to have a bunch of these players play today. That could be a lot of fun. The all-star team, Salzburg, and the Benfica boys are going to be playing today. I like that. So let's go to Thursday because Arsenal do play Thursday, right? So group A, Arsenal is on 12 points. They're already kind of through. I mean, yes, it's not guaranteed, but like if they get this game as like a draw, they're through, right? Um, if they lose, it's obviously not ideal. PSV will still have a chance to overtake them. Uh, but PSV is fighting against Bodo Glimt here to secure that second spot. Zurich, no chance. I don't know. It, it, this puts me into a weird spot. Like the prediction, I, I think if Saliba plays, he's going to be a much better option than Xavi Simmons. But do I go for the guaranteed starting line of players? Sheshko is not guaranteed, by the way, but he's my only option. Uh, apart from Spikic. Spikic, I don't see them do well against AC Milan at all. Watch him get a good score all of a sudden. But um, this is worrying me. If any Arsenal fans are watching this, let me know what you think. But that is the team that I would put in. Now, in my head, I'm thinking, what if I put all the players that I kind of like into one lineup, and that would be an all-star rare lineup or a challenger lineup, and that would be Morris, Taylor Harvard bellis Kirkchu, Enzo, Odgaard. That team, in my head, sounds much better in terms of like possibility of winning something. But then again, I'm competing against so many less players when it comes to under 23 that I don't want to put Morris in here. I think this team, if things go as planned, does, does have a good chance of winning something because there are 93 rares to be won. And so far, below 700 people have registered. That is more than 10% chance to win something. While in all-star rare, you only have 170 rares in there to be won. And I just don't know, like, I don't feel comfortable with the thought that I'm competing against so many people in All-Star. I feel like under 23 is the way to go. Now, I might regret this, but I think I'm going to go with these teams as I had it set up previously as well. And in All-Star, we're going for the threshold, basically, because I don't expect Sheshko to score. Uh, if we go over here into, I will watch the game, but um, not Austria. We, need, we go to the Champions League here and we take a look at this. What's the situation in the group as well? Like, that's something I need to see. So group E, Salzburg. Where's Salzburg? Salzburg, Salzburg, Salzburg. Okay, so Salzburg is on six points. AC Milan expected to win. Salzburg has to pull off at least a draw here. That's going to be essential to them. Because if they do, and Milan don't win with a bunch of goals, I think they're going to be in that second spot, right? So then they're going to go into the games against the likes of Milan, and, uh, you know, try to get things over the line. I'm assuming it's Milan. I don't, I don't actually quite know who they're going to be up against there. But, um, yeah, I think Salzburg, this is a do or die game. So for that sense, we have Soleil in there with only 70%. I don't like that. He apparently got injured, but I saw training pictures that he was fit. Uh, Salzburg themselves tweeted it. And Cesco is expected to play by 70%. I think... A target man type striker does better in a game like this than Adamu. So I hope that he plays. And yeah, those are the lineups. I think I'm going to go with these guys. I think that's what I'm going to run with. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see what we can get out of this. Hopefully it works into our favor and we can get ourselves some rewards here. Um, I could have gone under 23 rare pro, by the way. I do have Sildilia and Nunez playing as well. But Nunez obviously plays against Muric and Harvard Bellis. So that is not ideal. So that is why uh, they are in these training teams, as you guys can see. And I need to show you something special. Let's go over to Bayer Leverkusen. And lads, it's going to be time soon enough. First off, Palacios is back, which is great. But look at the man behind him. It's Florian Wirtz in the team training sessions once again which is lovely. And there he is again. And then you go down here and you see good news. Gute Neuigkeiten von Platz. You can read the English one if you want to. Florian Wirtz hat heute erstmals nach seinem Kreuzbandriss wieder Teile des Mannschaftstrainings absolviert. That means he has taken part in parts of the uh, team training, uh, again, along with the squad. So they are slowly integrating him. But 
he is close. He is very close now. And I do fully expect that possibly, not this weekend, but next weekend, I do think he might be in there again and playing. And that, my friends, would be huge. Florian Vietz is a ridiculous talent, and I can't wait for him to be back on the pitch. And if we take a look at this, we bought him around here. If you see his one-year chart, he was going for 8 to 9k, and that's a midfield card. I don't know what the hell people are doing, but when you look at the forward card, the cheapest one on the market right now is about 9.5k. I was kind of contemplating just throwing him, up, uh, throwing him onto the market for like, I don't know, 9k and seeing what people kind of offer. <laughs> Maybe someone's stupid enough to pick up the uh, to pick up that guy for 9k. But then again, I'm like, you know what? No, I just want to keep him. So I didn't even do that. <laughs> I didn't even uh, take on the chance of possible, uh, you know, returns here probably someone would offer me like maybe 5.5 at this stage I, even though i don't think anyone would but once this guy is back on the pitch the hype and the graph is going to completely change and if he does get a decisive in his first game oh boy oh boy if he comes back with a hundred oh lads it's gonna be so much fun and i genuinely can't wait for something like that to happen because in my opinion this team that leverkusen have is just lacking that florian Wirtz. So if you go all the, oops, sorry. If you go all the way back, let's go to the Florian Wirtz uh, setup teams for Bayer Leverkusen. And let's find some of the games that he did actually play in. So if you take a look at these types of games, do you see that they played a different formation of 4-2-3-1? For me, if they go back to this, right? The 4-2-3-1 formation once Wirtz is back, which is what I'm fully expecting, they can have... An amazing attack. Patrick Schick at striker, Diaby on the right, Wirtz at cam, and then the new man, Hudson Odoi, on that left-hand side. Now, I've seen plenty of the games for Leverkusen this season, and Hudson Odoi, even though he might have not gotten any of these decisives here, I really like him. I really like the way he plays, and I think he could do an amazing job in that team, especially with Florian Wirtz coming back in into the team as well. And yeah, man, I'm, I'm just generally super motivated to see what this team can achieve with the main man back into their squad. I do think there's going to be a massive change and shift in the performances of Bayer Leverkusen, because if you do look at them right now, things are not necessarily looking too great. Bayer Leverkusen is down here in the 15th position, hence why they fired their coach, right? But uh, I think with the return of Florian Wirtz and a bunch of the injured players like Palacios, this team should climb the league table back up. If you remember last season, Leipzig at a time was like outside of the top 10, really struggling, and then they just went on a tear. And the same, I think, was with Borussia Mönchengladbach, if I'm not mistaken. So... Teams like Bayer Leverkusen shouldn't be down here for too long. And I do expect them to go on a on a big rally and get a lot of games done and win them. And uh, with Florian Wirtz involved, hopefully by next weekend, um, we are looking at an incredible under-23 forward ready to play for us. But let's go into the club right now. And let me show you how things are going position-wise. So if we go uh, forwards now... We have Wirtz, Balik Vischa, Zion Fleming, Sheshko, Odgaard, Moleka now possibly revived with a new coach hopefully coming in soon enough. I think we are in a very, very good spot when it comes to the attackers at this point, especially when that man is back. Uh, defenders, I think, is the strongest we are set up in. I personally think we have some incredible defenders here. And midfielders, we do have some absolute beasts as well with Enzo, Nakamura, Xavi, uh, Getson, Shimanski, Kirkchu. We're just well set up. And from this point on, it's all about yielding, all about winning, all about having fun and enjoying ourselves. And those, my friends, are the lineups that I've put together. I have also done my Sora Mega uh, lineups. And I think in Sora Mega, I actually went with that idea that I had earlier on, which was exactly Morris, Taylor Harvard Bellis, Kirk Chu, uh, Enzo, and Odgaard. So if it goes, if it does go well, at least I'll win, I'll win somewhere else, right? <laughs> so I'll have that lineup going for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Hope you guys have a great day. And uh, one last thing I nearly forgot. I have gone ahead and won myself. Uh, can I see my, where, where are my, where are my, where are my, where are my uh, comments? Hello? What the hell? Why is it not there? I guess I'll show it here. This was my uh, result. So we got 40,000 in common champion. Didn't do too well because I had a DMP. 
And then we had Common Contender here coming in 23,660. Uh, for the upcoming game week, guys, I have put together my team here as well. You can see it. Uh, some of the boys apparently I've already played. Common Champion, we're in a good spot. Let's go. I just, oh, nice. All right, then. I just need Mr. Yanis to come up with an insane score. And ideally, this man, Moses Brown, to get some playtime too. Hopefully he does. If he doesn't, I'll be very upset. Uh, but that is how I'm set up in NBA. I really enjoyed. I actually already watched a couple of NBA games and it's sick. So I'll catch you guys next time. Take care and peace.